In expansive regions across our planet, a plague known as tungusiasis afflicts vulnerable populations. This ailment stems from the activities of tunga penetrans, commonly referred to as jiggers, chigos, or sandflies. These fleas burrow into human flesh, lay eggs, and sustain their larvae on the host's blood. The exposed skin on bare feet is particularly susceptible, but infections can also occur on hands, knees, and ankles. Prolonged exposure leads to gangrene and, ultimately, death. Individuals lacking basic protection such as footwear become easy targets for these burrowing fleas. Jiggers disproportionately affect marginalized communities with low socioeconomic status, primarily those living on less than $1 a day in rural areas without access to medical care. Infection rates among these impoverished populations can reach up to 60%, with older adults, the disabled, and children aged 5-14 being the most affected. Tungiasis is often accompanied by social stigmatization. The affliction is prevalent in sub-Saharan Africa, having migrated from Central and South America. Jigger eggs hatch into larvae in about 3-4 days, feeding on organic matter and blood. The entire larval and pupal stages take about 3-4 weeks to complete, leading to adults seeking capillaries for blood meals, centers for disease control. Tungiasis is caused by female sand fleas, burrowing into the skin and laying eggs. It can result in abscesses, secondary infections, gangrene, and disfigurement. The disease is prevalent in tropical and subtropical areas, with the highest burden on the poorest people. Both animals and humans are susceptible. Repeated infections mutilate the feet, hands, elbows, and knees, affecting the physical fitness of adults in households and diminishing overall life quality. Children afflicted with tungiasis experience difficulties walking, attending school, playing, and meeting other life necessity and life quality needs. Complications such as bacterial superinfections, blood poisoning, erythema, reddening of the skin, edema, excess fluid in the skin, desquamation, pain, and itching are constant challenges. In affected regions, individuals often remove sand fleas using makeshift tools like thorns, safety pins, or hairpins. Charitable organizations attempt to fill the gap but face resource limitations. Their use of small scalpels is somewhat more effective than homemade tools but poses risks from unskilled or accidental injuries. The removal process can lead to local inflammation and introduce pathogenic bacteria, fostering further infection. Additionally, the use of the same implements on multiple individuals raises the risk of spreading hepatitis B, hepatitis C, or HIV. Please remember to subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and activate the notification bell if you wish to see more content like this. Thanks for watching.